everyone, welcome to Scan Spider. This is part two of the pterodactyl pattern. If you haven't seen part one, go check that out first. But if you have, grab your hooks and let's get started. The wings are made up of two parts. We're going to have the arm part and the membrane part. We're going to start off doing the arm part for which you're going to need your 3.5 millimeter hook and your body color yarn. So we're going to begin with four single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is two single crochet followed by two increases. Round three is three single crochet followed by three increases. Round four begins with three single crochet. And then after the third single crochet, we're going to repeat one single crochet, one increase three times. Round five is 12 single crochet. Round six begins with three single crochet and then we're going to repeat two single crochet, one increase three times. Round seven is 15 single crochet. Round eight is three single crochet, and then we're going to repeat three single crochet, one increase three times. For round nine, we're going to do six increases in a row, and then we're going to follow that with three single crochet. And then we're going to repeat that pattern again. Six increases followed by three single crochet. For round 10, we're going to be starting the shoulder part of the arm, this part here. So we're going to do 15 single crochet. and 15 and then we're going to skip the last 15 stitches of the round so we're not going to be working into those instead you're going to fold your work in half like so and then for round 11 we're going to work straight into the first single crochet so we're skipping 15 stitches and we're working straight into what was stitch number one. After you've worked back into our first single crochet and put your stitch marker in, that should leave us with 15 single crochet here and 15 free stitches here. So for this portion of the wing, we're just going to be working in this part and we're going to leave this free. Rounds 11 through to 13 are just going to be 15 single crochet. And just keep in mind that we've already done stitch number one here. Round 14 is seven single crochet, one increase and then seven single crochet. Rounds 15 through to 17 are 16 single crochet. Round 18 is eight single crochet, one increase and then seven single crochet. Darling. 
Rounds 19 to 21 are 17 single crochet. Round 22 is eight single crochet, one increase, eight single crochet. Round 22 is the last round of the shoulder section. So we're just going to slip stitch and we need to cut a tail for sewing because this is where we're going to sew the wing onto the body. Pull that through. At this point, if you are using wire to hold up your wing, you're going to insert that. And just bend that around. And then we're going to begin stuffing. We're going to lightly stuff the point of the wing here and then continue stuffing the shoulder. When you finish stuffing, take your 3.5 millimeter hook and we're going to insert it into what was stitch number 16 of round nine. So if we look closely here, you can see that this stitch has been worked into. So we want to work into this free one here, stitch 16. When your hook is in stitch 16, we're going to bring back in our yarn and we're just going to line it up behind the stitch, pull it through and then slip stitch to join. Now this slip stitch isn't going to count as a stitch in our round. So when we're single crocheting, make sure you skip that. And what we're going to be doing is starting from round 10 again. So we've got round nine of the wing tip and we're going to be starting here in round 10 for the arm section. Round 10 of the arm section is just 15 single crochet. The first single crochet is going to be worked into that same stitch that we just slip stitched that we just slip stitched into, which is stitch 16 from round nine, and then continue on to Round 11 is going to be one decrease and 13 single crochet. Now, as you can see, we've got quite a gap between stitch 15 and stitch one. To close that as much as possible, when you first work into stitch one, you're going to bring the loop that's on your hook close to the head of the hook. And then you're going to push stitch one close to stitch 15 and keeping the yarn that's on your hook fairly taut you're then going to begin your decrease. Now this helps reduce the gap, but it doesn't get rid of it entirely. So what we're going to be doing is later on, we will be, oh, get through there, we will be sewing this close. So if there's still a gap, don't worry about that. We'll fix that up later. So we've done our decrease. And then we're just going to finish round 11 with 13 single crochet. Round 12 is 14 single crochet. Round 13 is one decrease followed by 12 single crochet. Round 14 is 13 single crochet. Round 15 is one decrease followed by 11 single crochet. Round 16 is 12 single crochet. Mm -hmm. 
after round 16, we're just going to stop and begin adding some stuffing to the arm. When we're finished stuffing, we're just going to reinsert our hooks and continue on with round 17, which is going to be one decrease followed by 10 single crochet. Round 18 is 11 single crochet. Round 19 is one decrease followed by nine single crochet. Round 20 is 10 single crochet. After round 20, we're just going to add a little bit more stuffing. And then from this point onwards, we're just going to continue to stuff the arm as we crochet. Uh, we're going to continue with round 21, which is one decrease followed by eight single crochet. Round 22 is nine single crochet. Round 23 is a decrease and then seven single crochet. Round 24 is eight single crochet. And after this round, we're just going to add a little bit more stuffing. Yes. Round 25 is one decrease followed by six single crochet. And round 26, our final round is one decrease followed by five single crochet. When you've finished round 26, you want to leave a fairly longish tail because what we're going to do is close up we're going to close up the last round first, but then we're going to use the rest of the tail to close this gap in the center here. So finish off how we finished off the, the feet, the head, uh, what else did we do with the egg? We finished off the egg that way by going under the front loops of the last six stitches. And six pull to close that hole and now we're going to go back into the center of round 26 and weave our needle through until we get to this gap here and then all we're going to do is sew this little hole closed And then when that's all closed up, we're just going to weave this tail end back through the wing just a couple of times to secure it. And then that is the arm section complete. Now that we've made the arm, we're going to make the membrane part. And for that, we're going to use our 3.5 millimeter hook as well as the same color yarn we used for both the belly patch and the beak, which in my case is cream. We're going to begin by making a slip knot and chaining two. Row one in the second chain from the hook is going to be one increase. Chain two. 
After we've done that one increase, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And then row two is just going to be two increases, one increase in each stitch of the previous row. For row three, we're going to chain one and turn our work. We're going to put three single crochet all in the first stitch. One, two, and three all in that one stitch. And then we're going to follow that with two single crochet. And then an increase in the last stitch. For row four, chain one and turn, we're going to do one increase, five single crochet, and then in the last stitch, we're going to put three single crochet all in that one stitch. Row five, chain and turn, and then we're just going to do 10 single crochet. For row six, chain and turn, we're going to do one increase, seven single crochet. After the seventh single crochet, we're going to do three single crochet all in the next stitch. Two and three. And then in the last stitch of the row, we're going to put one single crochet. Row seven, chain one and turn your work. And we're just going to do 13 single crochet across. Row eight, chain one and turn your work. We're going to begin with one increase, then do 10 single crochet three single crochet in the same stitch and finish with one single crochet in the last stitch. Row nine, chain one and turn, and then we're going to do 16 single crochet. Row 10, chain one and turn, and then we're going to do one increase, 13 single crochet, three single crochet in the next stitch, and then finish with one single crochet. Row 11 is our final row. We're going to chain one and turn our work, and then do 19 single crochet across. To finish off, we're just going to be single crocheting around the entire edge of the wing, as well as doing three picot stitches down the bottom. So we're going to do one at each end and one sort of about a third of the way across in line with the center point here. So we're going to start off with the first picot stitch. We've already single crocheted into the last stitch. So we're going to begin by chaining three. One, two, and three. Then we're going to work into the back bump of the first chain. Now, if you look at your stitches from front on, you've got the back loop and the front loop here. If you turn those over, you can see the little bumps of yarn at behind those back and front loops. This is the back bump. This is where we want to work into. So we're going to go into the back bump of the very first chain that we made. Once you've gone through that, yarn over and pull through. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two loops. And then we're just going to single crochet back into that same stitch that we single crocheted into already at the end of row 11. And that's how you do a Paco stitch. So from this point, you're just going to single crochet up the end of the wing and then back down the other side. We just want to put one single crochet in at the end of each row.
When you get to the bottom of the opposite side, we're just going to single crochet into the first stitch. And then we're going to do another picot stitch. So chain three, one, two, and three. We're going to single crochet into the back bump of the first chain. So you go into the back bump, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. And then we're just going to single crochet back into that same stitch. Now what you're going to do is single crochet across until you get to a stitch that you think is roughly in line with your point. So for me, that would be about here. Yes. So I've done 11 single crochet. This may be slightly different for you, but when you're in line with that point, we're going to do another Paco stitch. So single crochet, chain three and single crochet into the back bump and then I'm just going to single crochet back into that same stitch and then we're going to single crochet across to our original single crochet that we did here so the first single crochet of the first Paco stitch that we did I'm just going to leave a tail for sewing And the last step for the membrane is going to be to add a line with the body color straight up the wing. So like, like this. So you want to bring in your body color and I'll be doing this with my three millimeter hook, not my 3.5. And I'm going to start from the bottom. So I'm going to go into the Paco stitch I did bring in the body color yarn and we're going to join it with a slip stitch and then I'm going to go into that same space I just worked into and single crochet and then I'm just going to continue single crocheting up the wing until I reach the point. I'm also going to be working over this end to hide it but if you don't want to work over it you can weave it in. When you're done, just cut a short tail and then we're going to weave this tail end in at the back here to hide it. And that's how you do the wing. So this wing is going to be going on the left side of the body. When you crochet the second piece, before you add the, the stripe up the center, you want to flip this part over and then crochet that piece because this wing will go on the right side of the body and if you do this beforehand that's what it's going to look like on the right hand so on the right hand side so you want to flip that over first and then crochet the line next up we're going to be crocheting the feet now the feet are crocheted a little bit differently than the other pieces we've done so far we're going to be crocheting the toes separately so i've done two here as you can see and then we're going to be joining them together to continue on to do the rest of the foot and the claws in the dark blue are a separate pattern piece so we don't want so we're not worrying about those just yet but we're going to be starting with the toe pattern and then continuing on with the rest of the foot pattern so To begin the toe pattern, we're going to put six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is two single crochet, one increase repeated twice. Round three is three single crochet, one increase repeated twice. At the end of round three, there should be 10 stitches in your round and then rounds four, five and six are just going to be 10 single crochet each. Or you could just do 30 single crochet consecutively.
when you finished crocheting round six, how you finish off is going to depend on what number toe it is. So if it's toe number one or two, you're going to cut the yarn. However, if it's toe number three, like it is for me, you're just going to not cut the yarn, but secure the end. So we're leaving this attached, we're not cutting it. Set that aside for now. And then you're going to pick up toe one and toe two. For one of these toes, take the tail end and you're going to weave it in through the back of your stitches to secure it, which would be this toe here. For the second toe, we're actually going to use this yarn to sew the toes together. So grab your needle and you're going to thread the tail end through that. And then with this tail end, I'm going to sew these two toes together for two stitches. So I'm going to be using stitch one of the round and stitch 10. Just line your toes up together and then I'm going to go into stitch one here. And then into the same stitch on this toe here and join them together. And then I'm going to be going into oops, the next stitch down in the round here. and stitch number 10 on this toe here. So that's two stitches from each toe sewn together. I'm just going to go over them a couple of times so it's nice and secure. Once more, and then when you're finished, you can just weave in this end. And I'll just hide that yarn end in there. So now that we've sewn the toes together for two stitches on each toe, that's going to leave us with eight free stitches in each one. At this point we can set these joined toes aside and we're going to go back to our last toe, the one that's still attached to our yarn, and we're going to reinsert our hook. You're going to take your joined toes and then we're going to pick one, it doesn't matter which one, and we're going to press it flat. So I'm using this one here. The two stitches that are on the end here are the two that we're going to be working into to join the toes together. So what you're going to do next is take this middle toe and you're going to line it up with the toe that's on your hook here. And what we're going to do to join all the toes together is to cro single crochet into the joined toes and then single crochet into this third toe here. So again, I'm squashing this middle toe. There's two stitches on the end here. I'm going to be working into the first one here. So I'll take my hook and insert that into the first stitch. I'm working from inside the toe and then going out of the toe. And then from there, I'm just going to go straight into the next stitch. So it would be stitch number one of this third toe. So you can see I've gone through both stitches. Once I've gone through both, I'm going to yarn over and pull through both of those stitches. This will leave me with two loops on my hook and then I'm just going to yarn over and finish the single crochet. We're going to repeat that once more. So I'm going to go into the next stitch of the middle toe. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch of the third toe, yarn over, pull through both stitches, yarn over, finish the stitch. So now that we've joined all of our toes together, we're going to single crochet into the next free stitch of our third toe. So if you can see the joining yarn here, I want to work into this toe, uh, this stitch, <laughs> this stitch here, yarn over and pull through. And this stitch that I've just made, this single crochet, is actually going to become stitch number one of round seven. Now each of the toes has six rounds in it, and round seven is going to include all the toes. Now because we've joined each together for two stitches, and there were ten stitches uh, for the final round of each toe, that's going to leave us with eight single crochet in each end toe, and six free single crochet in the middle toe. So all up we've got 22 stitches to work with. 
Round seven is going to be 10 single crochet, one increase repeated twice. Now to begin, we're going to start with the 10 single crochet. Just keep in mind that we already made the first one here. I've just done stitch eight. The next stitch we need to work into after stitch eight is going to be in the middle toe here. It can be a little bit difficult to see which stitch that is, but all you need to do is just gently pull the toes apart and you'll be able to see the yarn here that's joining these two stitches together. So we want to skip over that stitch. We want to work into the next free stitch, which will be this one here. So skip the stitches that are joined together and this one, this first free one in the middle toe will be stitch number nine. And then 10, increase in the next stitch. And then we're going to repeat that pattern again. So after our first increase, we're going to jump across to the next toe to do our first First single crochet of the second repeat, so that's one. Seven and eight. Once again, we need to skip the stitches we've worked into and single crochet into the next free one. Nine. Ten and then increase in the last free stitch. At the end of round seven, you should now have 24 single crochet and rounds eight through to 11 are just going to be 24 single crochet. At the end of round 11, we're just going to stop and we're going to begin stuffing the toes. When the toes are stuffed, we're going to continue with round 12, which is going to be one single crochet, one decrease, then two single crochet, one decrease repeated five times. And we're just going to finish round 12 with another single crochet. Round 13 is one single crochet, one decrease repeated six times. After round 13, we're just going to add the rest of the stuffing. Round 14 is our final round and it's just six decreases. When you've finished round 14, we're actually going to be leaving a fairly long tail for this one because we need to sew the foot onto the body later. So leave a long tail, but we're still going to finish off the same way we did for both the egg and the head by going under the front loops of each of the last six stitches. We're going to close up that hole, but instead of weaving back through the body like we have previously, we're just going to leave that as is for now so we can sew it on later. For the claws, we're going to be switching to our three millimeter hook, and I'm also going to be using the same color as the body, but a few shades darker. So for me, that's dark blue. And then to begin the claws, we're just going to put four single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is one single crochet, one increase repeated twice. And then our third and final round is just going to be six single crochet. We're 
we're just going to slip stitch to finish off and there we go and leave a tail for sewing after we've crocheted all our pieces we can begin putting our pterodactyl together now this pattern has quite a lot of little individual pieces so what we're going to do is break the assembly down into two parts we're going to assemble all the smaller parts so do all the little bits of sewing and then we're going to take those larger parts that they create and then put them all together so we're going to start by first sewing the leaf to the flower that we've made i'm just going to thread the tail end of the leaf through your needle and then just sew that to the bottom of the flower somewhere you want to position it so it's just poking out to the side somewhere it doesn't really matter it's just down to personal preference how you'd like it to look When you're finished, don't cut the tail end of your leaf. We're going to use that to sew the flowers onto the head later. So once the leaf is sewn on, just set that aside. And then we're going to go on to the next piece, which is going to be the eyes and the pupils. You're going to position the pupil on the black part of the eye, roughly in the center, and then sew that on. When I finish sewing, I'm then going to use the excess white yarn to put a little reflective sparkle on the eye here. So where do I want it? About here. And I'm just going to go over that twice. And two. And then just weave your white yarn in through the back of your stitches and snip off any excess. The next part we're going to do is to sew the claws to the feet. Each of the claws has six single crochet in their final round. So we're going to sew those directly onto round one of the toes or between rounds one and two, because that gives us six stitches to work with. Next, we're going to sew the wing membrane to the wing arm. We're going to attach it to the back of the wing like so. And you want to make sure that your little stripe up the center here lines up with the middle of your wing. So the elbow section, the bend. When you've got that in place, just go ahead and pin it down. And as you're sewing, just be careful because the wing the arm's not very thick and then the pins tend to poke through so don't hurt yourself and when that's in place go ahead and sew that on Ladies and gentlemen. lastly we're going to be sewing the belly patch to the body the bottom of the belly patch here sits between rounds 25 and 26 from the bottom the back loops or the round that had all the back loops was round 20 so you can count out from there so 20 21 22 23 24 25 and 26 and then you're just going to pin the bottom in place there press the rest of the belly out flat and pin that and then when that's done we're going to start sewing it on Now that all the smaller pieces are assembled, we're going to start putting the bigger pieces together. The first thing we're going to do is sew the head to the body. Now you've got to make sure the head is in the right position. When we stuffed the beak part, we made sure to lay it flat on the table as we stuffed it. So that is going to be the bottom of the head. So that's what you want facing down. We're going to place the head onto the body so that the body sits towards the back of the head here. The exact round placement doesn't really matter. It just more depends on how you'd want it to look. 
Another thing to keep in mind as you're pinning is you want the beak to be centered over the belly patch. You don't really want the beak facing off this way and the belly patch here. So make sure that's in line. And then just double check everything that the head's in the right position and it's lined up with the belly. And when it is, we're going to begin sewing. However, we're not going to be sewing on the entire head. We're going to sew around for about three quarters of the way. And then we're going to add a little bit more stuffing. And when that's done, then we're going to finish sewing. Next, we're going to attach the crest to the back of the head, but before we can do that, we need to add some stuffing to it first. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the crest as we did with the body. We're not going to stuff it fully. We're just going to leave a little bit of room, sew it on for about three quarters of the way, and then add the rest of the stuffing. So when you've got the stuffing in, we're going to place the crest at the back of the head. Now you can choose where you want the crest to sit, if you want it further up the head, if you want it further back, entirely up to you, but I'm going to be placing the bottom of the crest just above the last round, yeah. and also like we did with the head, we want to make sure it's centered, and then just pin and sew, remembering to stop about three quarters of the way to add the rest of the stuffing, and then when that's done, continue sewing. After the crest, you're going to sew on the eyes. You're going to position them about five rounds back from the beak. So you just start here and count down. And make sure that the colored sections of the eye are at the back of it. So you don't want the colored bits here. The second thing you want to keep in mind when you're pinning the eyes in place is you want them to sit level with each other. So position them where you want them to go and then have a look at your pterodactyl from the front and just make sure that the tops and the bottoms of the eyes line up so they're not sitting on different, whoops, <laughs> at, they're not sitting at different heights of the head. When they're in the correct positions, we're going to go ahead and sew those on as well. If you're like me, you're going to sew on the white part of the stitches with your white yarn and the black stitches with your black yarn. But if you just left one tail for sewing, you're just going to use that color for the entire way around. If you have any black yarn left over from the eyes, or if you don't have any, just go ahead and cut some. But what we're going to do is use that to add some nostrils. So I'm going to thread the black yarn through my needle, and then I'm just going to push my needle up through the bottom of the beak. And I'm going to emerge from out between rounds two and three. And then pull your needle through and the black yarn as well. But what you want to do is leave a little tail on the outside here, just long enough that you'll be able to tie it off later. And then we're going to create the nostrils. So I'm going to skip three rounds, one, two, three, and push my needle in through there. And then I'm going to go across about three stitches from that original stitch I worked into. So one, two, three, and then I'll go into the fourth here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to skip three rounds. One, two, three. And then I'm going to go into that stitch. And from this point, the last stitch we're going to be working into, I'm going to push my needle out through this original stitch where our tail is, is hanging. So out through there. I'm just going to pull on those ends firmly so the nostrils lay nice and flat. If you don't like the way your nostrils turned out, you can take the yarn out and try it again. But if you do, all you're going to do is tie the yarn off. 
just two or three knots so it's nice and secure. I'm going to cut off the rest of the yarn and then just grab your hook and insert it into the beak and we're going to pull that knot back into the body to hide it. And when that's done, we're then going to add the flowers to the top of the head. I like to put mine where just over the join where the crest meets the head. So I'm going to stick one in the middle and I'm going to put two on either side. And we're going to be using the yarn left over from the leaf. So thread that through your needle and decide where you want the leaf to stick out. It doesn't really matter too much. Then pin down your flower and sew it on. Now that all the head pieces are finished, we're going to add the feet. We're going to line up the feet by placing the middle toe in line with the outer edge of the belly patch. So we're going to have one on each side like this. But before we pin those in place, we're actually going to take out the egg and sit our pterodactyl down. There's going to be a bit of an awkward angle, but we'll, we'll see how we go. So you want to sit your, sit your pterodactyl on a flat surface, and as it is resting on the flat surface, so if my hand was the table, for example, you're then going to pin the feet in place so they're resting gently against the table or whatever flat surface you're working with. This will be able to, this will help the pterodactyl balance a little bit better. So I'm going to do mine this way. And then once they're in position, you can use this tail end to sew them on. Now I won't be sewing on the whole foot, I'm just going to be sewing up the side, across the round that's just below the toe, so it'll be round seven, and then back down the other side. Now if you're like me and you accidentally snipped off uh, one of your tail ends, all you need to do is thread your needle with some of the body coloured yarn. And we're going to attach and then finish off uh, the, the foot, similar, similarly to how we did the nostril. So you'll insert your needle into a stitch on the side of the body, it doesn't matter where, and then I'm going to push it up until it emerges just below the bottom of the foot. Pull through until just a little bit of a tail is left, and then I'm going to sew on the foot for the entire way around. And once I've done that, I'm going to go back out of this stitch where the tail is, knot it off, and then cut the excess and pull that knot back into the body. That's what you don't want to do. So make sure that end doesn't pull through when you're sewing the foot on. The final thing we need to do is to sew on the wings. You're going to place the top of the wing, the shoulder part, about seven or eight rounds down from the top of the neck here. And then what you're going to do is pin it in place, begin sewing, and like some of the other pieces, we're just going to add a little bit more stuffing at about the three quarter mark. And then we're just going to finish sewing the wing on. With the wings sewn on, our pterodactyl is now complete. <laughs>